I don't know to this day what I heard, what I experienced, but I do know that I, I felt like we weren't alone. Hi, hello friends. This is Zoe and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hello, thanks for coming. I post spooky and paranormal videos every week and I would love for you to come along and subscribe. I'm currently filming a short series about my experience attending a haunted college. However, I wanted to kind of break up the norm a little bit and film a short video about my experience going to a very haunted location when I was younger. There is a small rural road outside of my hometown of Woodstock, Ontario called Critters Lane and if you're from the Woodstock area you're probably familiar with its folklore and the stories that go along with that about it being incredibly haunted and having plenty of lost souls and spirits lingering in that area. This area was always a place that a lot of my friends would go late at night to scare each other, to tell spooky stories, and to just have the experience of driving down it. It's a very small road off a main country rural road that goes through a field almost, through a set of trees, um, and then comes out the other end. It's incredibly short, but incredibly spooky because it's very dark, there's no lighting, there's no houses, there's a abandoned, burnt down remains of a stone house within the forest that the road goes through. Um, and if I can recall, there is a small set of train tracks as well that crosses the road before you reach the forest. Some of the stories that were told when I was younger is that um, it's haunted by children and haunted by lost souls. It's also said that if you're driving across the train tracks that your car will sometimes stall on the tracks for a brief period of time and regardless of if you're you know going in forward or reverse whatever the maker model of car whatever the year that it just lags and it just stalls which is terrifying. <laughs> I hate train tracks. Train tracks in general scare me so much like trains in general terrify me the car will just stall and die for about a minute and then you're able to continue on because of all these scary stories and the history of the area um, when i was younger i wanted to go there with my best friend at the time and my boyfriend at the time um, the three of us decided that it was a good idea <laughs> i don't know what we were thinking we were dumb kids um, my boyfriend at the time is actually my husband, Andrew. Um, we were just dating. The three of us were actually inseparable. We spent a ton of time together um, that summer. It was actually the summer after my experience at college and attending a very haunted college and having a lot of paranormal experiences. So me being, you know, without a fix of paranormal activity, <laughs> um, for a short period of time decided this was a really good idea. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> to this day, I still don't know what I was thinking. So we decided to one night go down this road. My husband, boyfriend at the time, is a bit of a skeptic. He's always been a bit of a skeptic. Um, my girlfriend at the time, um, Chantelle, she is just as much of a junkie and spaz as I am <laughs> when it comes to anything scary or spooky and she was really excited so she's like yeah I'll drive we'll all go together we can do this like let's do it like really late one night so I think we went out at around 11 or midnight um, on a summer night and it was scary <laughs> to say the least like it's a very dark road there's no lighting there's no houses it was really hard to find first of all because if you search on Google or anything like that, Critters Lane, it you, it doesn't really come up. So being able to find it back then when we didn't really have like smartphones like we do now, it was just difficult to find the actual road that we were looking for. 
once we finally stumbled across it, um, we, you know, pulled up and parked and were kind of talking about what we were planning on doing. So I said, we should just drive. <laughs> we can drive slow, but we should just drive slowly from one end to the other and then go home. Like, I don't want to mess around. I don't want to do anything that could stir up activity because given my experience at school, I knew what could happen if we messed around or played around with spirits. Um, it's not something that you should do. So that, that was my suggestion. We just drive one end to the other, go home. My husband, boyfriend at the time, I'm just going to say Andrew. Andrew decided that he wanted to get out. He's like, no, like, I want to get out. I want to explore. I want to look around. He's brave. He's a skeptic. He's like, I want to see what's going on. Like, we need to park once we get into the woods and I want to look around. And I'm like, no, like, you can't do that. Like, you have to stay with us. We're staying in the car. Maybe what we can do is we'll park and then we'll just sit there in the car for a small period of time and then we can just drive and go. So that's what we had negotiated on is that we were just gonna park, sit there, maybe put a window down, keep all the lights on and then we'll go. So as we were driving through um, the like field to get to the location on Critters Lane, we passed the um, train tracks nothing happened we were able to drive over them they were really sketchy I don't know if they're not being used or not but there wasn't a lot of markings there was I think a crossing sign but there was no lights no arm nothing we drove across those and we got into the woods and it was terrifying it was so dark it was really humid that night I remember it being hot and we were <laughs> in my friend's Pontiac Sunfire so if you know what kind of car that is, you're probably just as old as I am and I'm dating myself and when this occurred, but that's okay. So we got into the woods and we slowed down and I just felt uneasy. I knew I didn't want to be there long and I knew I wanted to go. So I said to Chantel, I said, Chantel, we should probably just wrap this up, be quick. And she said, okay, like, you know, we'll get going. And then my husband, being the awesome human he is, hopped out of the car <laughs> and closed the door. And I said, like, Andrew, I was in the back seat. I said, Andrew, like, get in the car. Like, we need to go. And he said, no, like, it's fine. Just come out. And I remember him kind of walking around the car. I remember getting so upset. Like, I was so emotional. I was upset. I didn't want to be there. I knew we had made a mistake. I was yelling at Andrew to get in the car. Chantel was nervous. She didn't want to be there either. And he wouldn't get in the car. This is why I, <laughs> I can't believe I married him. <laughs> so like we're yelling at him, like get in the car, get in the car. We're ready to go. We don't want to be here anymore. And he, he's like, fine, just go. I'll ride on the car. Oh God, we were so dumb. So he gets on the car and he sits on the hood and Chantel was like, oh my God, this like, he's so stupid, but let's just go. So then he, we start driving through the woods really slowly and he's riding on the hood. And I think at one point Chantel got really scared and stopped and was like, Andrew, get inside. Like, let's just go. This place is freaking me out. And I remember seeing the remains of the house in the woods and I remember hearing things that I don't know to this day what I heard, what I experienced, but I do know that I, I felt like we weren't alone. So Andrew got in the car, finally we got him in the car, and we drove, finished the woods and came out on the other end. So Andrew being in the front seat with Chantel, and then I was in the back seat in the middle and we were talking and I was like, oh, I just felt this like a sigh of relief I was just like oh my gosh I'm so glad we're not here anymore it feels so nice to just not be near this place and I I pretty much said to them I said I never want to go back there um and we were we were pulling out and driving down the road and Chantel I remember this distinctly Chantel's front windshield started fogging up 
And I was like, why is it doing that? It's summertime. Like, tur like turn on your defrost. Like, what's going on? And she's like, that's so weird. Like, it wasn't raining. It wasn't... It was a little humid. Like, it was really humid. But I don't know why her windshield was fogging up. So the windshield started fogging up. And Chantel was like, Andrew, like, what did you do? You got a handprint on my windshield. Look. And over on the passenger side of the windshield was a handprint and a smear and Andrew's like I didn't touch your windshield Chantel's like like who else like where else could it have come from you were sitting on the hood of my car you obviously touched my windshield and he's like I swear I didn't touch your windshield <laughs> like I promise you I got on the hood and I was like oh, guys just like quit arguing about it like just Andrew wipe it off and I said, Chantel, just pull over, like, Andrew will get out of the car and he'll wipe it off. I think she sprayed and put on her windshield wipers to get the handprint off, but it wasn't, it wasn't moving. And then Andrew kind of leans forward and he, he kind of just goes silent and t touches the handprint. And he said, that's not on the outside of the car. That's on the inside of the car. And I promise you, I was not in the front seat. Chantel was in the driver's seat. No one was in the front seat of this car when we were going through. This handprint was not here. We would have seen it. Andrew's like, that's on the inside of the car. And look, he put his hand up to the handprint. And he's not like a huge guy. He's maybe like five... 11 maybe 5'9 five, 5'11 five, and he's like not a big guy at all and he has a pretty fairly standard size hand maybe a little bit bigger than mine and he held his hand up to the handprint and this handprint was so small like it had to have been the size of a child his hand was far bigger than this handprint and I was like, Chantelle, like, what children have been in your car? Like, obviously, a child. she's like, there have been no children in my car. This is like, no one has touched my windshield. I promise you, I promise you that no one has touched my windshield. That was not there before we got into the woods. And I just thought to myself, you've got to be kidding me. It was so scary. Even to this day, Andrew is a skeptic. I don't know how he's a skeptic, but he's a skeptic. So we l laughed it off as best we could and we just never went back. Critters Lane or the 43rd line um, was that a lot of stories and a lot of um, hearsay is that it's linked to one of the only um, massacres in Oxford County history. The morning of December 21st, 1873, Timothy Topping woke up and murdered his wife and four of his youngest children. Timothy woke up at 5 a.m. four days before Christmas and grabbed an axe and butchered his wife. She was 42 years old and her name was Sarah. He then proceeded to kill four of his youngest children with the axe and after doing so he tried to then commit suicide with the same axe however was stopped by one of his older children timothy was father to eight children he had lost his eldest daughter jane prior to the massacre of his family he also attempted suicide because of this strong depression of losing his oldest daughter. He was incredibly worried about finances. He was a farmer and was deeply concerned that his family was going to have to be homeless, live on the streets due to finances and not having enough money. This is said to be one of the main reasons, along with depression and suffering from some severe mental health, that he ended up murdering his family. The rumor of Critters Lane is that it's haunted by Timothy and the souls of his children that he killed. However, Timothy didn't actually die at that property. He was sentenced to be hanged in Woodstock, Ontario, and prior to then, he spent the remainder of his life living in an asylum in London, Ontario. He ended up being killed by a prison guard at that asylum. This began the folklore and one of the city's most paranormal legends of 
the Topping Massacre. This area outside of my hometown is very popular and well known to paranormal investigators and ghost hunters and people from all over the country have traveled here to try and connect with spirits and souls, especially those of the Topping children. I post spooky and paranormal videos every week and I would love for you to come along and subscribe.